can begin by first stating that most of our patients who suffer from schizophrenia uh, is such a debilitating illness that most of them are not taking any medications for a few weeks. As a clinician, I'm often treating them for, for years because it impacts their whole lifespan. So having known that fact, I think it's really important to look at the, uh, the data, not just short-term, but also long-term. And I think that's why the data that was presented at SERS is quite interesting because it goes into the effectiveness data over the 52 weeks versus only the five-week data that we had talked about previously. In the During the poster that was presented in the presentation, it, we spoke about that initially the data was shown for the immersion programs to work at the five-week interval to show that there was a remarkable difference in people who took RxD versus placebo as it pertained to the, the, the symptom burden for psychosis. But what was not known was, does that effect carry itself? Does it maintain itself over the duration of a year? So this particular data goes into that, where it looks at those patients who either rolled over from the trial that was conducted prior, which was the acute trial, where the patients came in very symptomatic, were admitted to the hospital, um, their symptoms improved, and then they rolled over this, what they call a long-term safety trial, or these were new patients with the Immersion 5 program, where these were patients who had not been exposed to car XT before, and then they were rolled into a open label trial. And the purpose was to see how these the patients do as you monitor them over the span of 52 weeks. And what the data really showed was that when you look at the patient's uh, data over at 52 weeks, the effect of the, the drug, effect of car XT, uh, largely maintained itself over the 52 weeks. So the, the drug was not something that stopped its effect midway through, uh, which I think is very, very promising because you want to see the effect of these medications that is uh, maintaining. And I think over 75% of the participants had at least a 30% improvement in the symptoms at the length of uh, 52 weeks. So I think that's a very promising data to really review and take a look at. Yeah, so I know when we last spoke, we had talked about in the midst of the acute trials that were just conducted. Um, and now, of course, we're at this horizon where now we also have a privilege of been having the data long term, both from the effectiveness perspective, but also, I think, importantly, from a safety perspective. Uh, and I think we may have talked about it last time a little bit that often with the current treatment regimens, there is a trade off that has to be held where the drugs may be effective, but as the patient takes them long term, you are worried about them gaining weight, right? You're worried about metabolic symptoms such as diabetes, increased glucose. Um, side effect burden gets really large. So the patient and the caregiver often have to decide, is it worth it? Is the trade-off really worth it for me to have a drug that's maybe effective, but also has these side effects long term? So I think that's where the immersion program now, it becomes really promising because the data looked at not just the effectiveness over 52 weeks, but also looked at the side effect profile, the tolerability over the 52 week period. And, um, and what it showed really sort of uh, confirms what we had thought about with the mechanism fraction for car XT, which is very unique in that it affects the muscarinic receptors and not the dopamine and serotonin that we are used to in our current drugs. And what this data showed was that over 52 weeks, that the there was actually a slight decrease in weight in the patients, uh, about 2.6 kilogram over 52 weeks, which is very different than our most of our current medication that cause a significant weight gain in some cases. Plus, there was no effect on metabolic symptoms. So there was no effect, for example, on cholesterol, triglycerides. There was no significant negligible effect on hemoglobin A1C, which is the marker for diabetes and sugars. And the other symptoms are movement symptoms. A lot of the patients who are on these medications will often get uh, really rigid, Parkinsonian, and there were none of those symptoms were observed on the rating scales of the assessments that we conducted over 52 weeks. So I think um, if you look at the arc of the immersion program, it sort of went in these phases, right? The first phase really documented if the patient arrives in a hospital with urgent psychotic symptoms, can you treat them? Will CAR-X be effective in bringing those symptom burden down? And last data showed that, that yes, it will uh, quite effectively. And then now the second phase of this is to see, okay, you did that but the patients don't stay on this medication just for a few weeks, right? They continue on for up to a year or more. 
Can CAR-XT show that that effect lasts for up to 52 weeks? And can it show that the trade-off with the side effects is not as significant? And I think that's where this immersion program has become really promising because not only does it show the acute effect, but now there is a really good promising data to show that the effect can maintain itself over 52 weeks. And on top of that, the safety profile looks, uh, looks very promising over that 52 weeks as well. So I think the challenges are not unusual with any other study. When you have a study that enrolls patients over 52 weeks or longer, the schizophrenia as a disease burden often has often suffers with patients just coming to the visits on a regular basis, right? Being compliant with the medication. And that is not unique to this particular program. I think that is true with any schizophrenia program where the patients have to really uh, have a compliance built in where they come in and they produce the data. So overall, I think the study has actually done really well. Study has gone quite well. Most of the patients have uh, who have completed the 52 weeks or have gone uh, sort of in a long term have continued to take their medications. Um, and if in many cases, if the adverse events happen in the beginning, they were sort of transient in nature, and then they sort of dissipate over time. And, and again, it, it, no drug will be for everyone, but I think it's really important that the, in the, from a trial perspective, the, you know, out of having done these trials for over 14 years in schizophrenia sphere, um, the trial has actually gone, have been very promising, has gone really, really well over the span of time. So the data is still being collected. Uh, the the, the CARNXT was designed as a medication that was very unique in its pharmacology, right? It was designed, it actually stemmed historically from old days when the patient showed tremendous amount of benefit in, in psychosis, actually in Alzheimer's. This is historically, that's how the drug sort of started a long time ago. So I think as we have this robust data now in schizophrenia, short term as well as now long term, um, I think it, it's really exciting to see where this takes us, where it takes us from maybe possibly different indications one day. And I think Karuna can probably share more about the pipeline for what they might be thinking. But, but there is definitely an interest in if the drug has been found to be effective in short term in our patients who suffer from schizophrenia, and now the long term data looks promising as well, can this potentially affect other indications? Can it affect patients suffering from other mental illnesses, um, Alzheimer's with psychosis, for example, or some of the other ones as well? So I think I think it really opens up the area as we continue to look at the data in, in greater detail. I think schizophrenia, having done research here for, you know, like I mentioned, close to 14 years in this area, it's a um, uh, the, the drugs that we have tried often often do tend to produce effect for efficacy. Um, when you think of schizophrenia, you think of these domains, you think of patients who are suffering from positive symptoms, which are, of course, their psychosis, their voices, their paranoia, uh, but often gets overlooked as their negative symptoms, which are, you know, energy. They have no energy, no motivation to do anything. They can't hold a job, right? And also the cognitive symptom, which are their ability to think, ability to really process things, their memory. Um, so I think overall in schizophrenia, where I see the progress being made over time is not just in the positive symptoms of what we are all uh, rightfully so interested in reducing in our patients, paranoia, hallucinations, but also broadening into the spheres of, of their negative and cognitive symptoms. And, and I think that's where I see the research, whether it's with car XT or other compounds, really moving in the future to sort of have a holistic treatment paradigm for our patients. I think one of the things that I would say is that having been a clinician and a researcher, having treated this patient over many, many years, uh, clinicians often have to decide a subtle balance between the effectiveness of a particular medication and then its safety profile long-term. Um, I always say that a clinicians have to often decide, am I doing more good than harm long-term as I prescribe these medications to our patients? So I think where the CAR-XT, because of just very unique mechanism of action, fits in into that treatment regimen is that, it? number one, it provides a very differentiated profile that is, has never been sort of used before uh, with a muscarinic drug. Second, I think it really offers an opening and an option to potentially use these medications like CAR-XT if they're approved by the FDA early on in the treatment so you don't have a cumulative 
burden that collects over these patients that makes them want to stop their medications, makes them want to not be on these medications long term. So I think from a clinician perspective, it's really important to understand how this type of a unique pharmacology could fit into their arsenal of medications, uh, not just short term, but also thinking from a long term vantage point for these patients as well.